Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Red Men TV and your latest episode of Expert Insight. My name is Dan Club. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by freelance journalist for this one, Henry Flynn. Henry, how do you, mate? You okay? Yeah, all good. Thanks, Dan. No, good. Good man. Thank you for joining me. Massively appreciated. Um, let's dive straight into it then. Martin Zubamendi now, as always with these things, have to caveat it right at the start with he currently is not a Liverpool player. Who knows? I'm not really sure he knows if he's going to be a Liverpool player or not at the time of recording, but we'll wait and see what happens. Um, I wanted to speak to you because I found an article that you did a few years back and it was entitled Three Lesser Known Spanish Stars Whose Value Could Soar in 2022. So that was obviously in 2021 and Martin Zubimendi featured within that. I wanted to kind of get your take as to why why him back then, really? What have you seen from his from his career to that point that made you think, OK, this is really one to watch, one to keep a close eye on and one you felt was going to go on to become... Maybe not what he is right now, but certainly a star. Well, I think he's sort of emblematic of Real Sociedad and what they do. Um, probably the the best sort of exponent of, of their style of play. Um, he's been through the, the youth system, of course. Um, and yeah, I think he's probably the best example of, of, sort of what the club is about. They play a very smooth uh, style of football. They're very precise in, in the build-up play. And I think for a while, people have been able to see what he's about. Uh, Jabby Alonso is, of course, very complimentary uh, about him. That's been mentioned quite a lot. Um, and in recent times, he's he's really looked part of the furniture at, at Sociedad. Um, of course, you know, Sociedad is not a, a club that's competing sort of at the top of La Liga. It's unlikely to go far in the Champions League, but they've shown that they can, can compete at a very high level. And I think he best represents what they're all about. Um, he's very, he's a very smooth play. He's, he's got great passing ability. Maybe you could say his, his long range passing is not quite up to scratch. Um, but in terms of short, short passing, composing the play, allowing the, the other more sort of creative forward players to go and express themselves, facilitate those players. He's been doing that for a while. And I think the world is starting to now really see what he's about at sort of 20, 24, 25 years of age around his peak or at least approaching his peak. So I think it's been a pretty steady uh, trajectory for him. He's obviously had the benefit of coming through a very, very good youth academy. Uh, for Vieta, he's gone from the, the the B team to the first team. It's been a pretty seamless transition. Um, Sociedad has one of the best academies in, in, in Spain, typical of many Basque clubs. So I think this has just been a very steady transition. And, and of course, it's sort of culminated with, um, at least to many onlookers, Obviously, some more for, more familiar with him watching La Liga, but obviously his performances in the in the Euros final sort of shows you know th this is a player who's not just got potential, but this is a player who's perhaps ready for this uh, next step. So it's it's been a pretty steady progression, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it there, he's almost like he's become a, a focal point now of that Sociedad side. And he's clearly, obviously, a Sociedad lad, he's a, he's a Basque lad. And that's sort of part of the reason as to why this deal maybe hasn't been as smooth as it possibly could have been had it been somebody else. And I mean, there's a lot of Liverpool fans sort of not getting angry, but it's been a bit, OK, well, why doesn't anyone come to us? But if we would have this exact same sort of feeling, were it to be Curtis Jones, if Steven Gerrard in the years gone by, of course, it's that sort of thing. So don't really blame him. And you said it there, he's obviously become very integral to what they do. In terms of the way they play then, they are very sort of possession-based, their football, their style. Is he very much the heartbeat of that? I know there's Mikel Marino, there's obviously the good players in the round, him, but does a lot of what is good about Sociedad, does that seem to go through Zubarendi? I think so. I think Bobby Mendy can can get forward, um, and I think we'll, we'll talk a bit more about sort of how he might. I guess how he might fit Liverpool if he joins. Of course, uh, I would say he Marino. Marino is an interesting player. Some would consider him more of a defensive player, but he has come forward with goals. Um, we saw it a little bit in the, in the Premier League for Newcastle. I think with uh, with Thubi Mendy, yeah, I would say a lot of the good the good stuff goes through him. Out, out of all the players in Sociedad's eleven, he he is that number six uh, player. They've got a couple of others. Thubi is able to play that position. He's I think also can play at centre back. They've had players in the past like Yara Mendy who can play in, in similar positions. But at the moment, I would say Thubi Mendy is is that player. Um, and interestingly, he he is quite used to playing in that. 4-3-3 type formation which slots will probably incorporate Liverpool although there will be other formations as well you'd imagine um, so in terms of having the responsibility 
in that position to orchestrate play, being that that main number six to disrupt play and then and start launch attacks. I would say probably you know with all players available, he he is he is the one, and I think that's kind of reflected by how highly they value him. Pretty reasonable uh, release clause, and the fact that they obviously want him to stay very badly. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, and you can't really blame him for that. I think. If they didn't want him to stay, that would raise more eyebrows as to why. So they were quite happy to see him walk away, given the fact he's come through the ranks there. And again, just how integral he is to their system and their style right now, that would that would become more in question, let's put it that way. Um, you've already touched upon a few of his qualities already, Henry, but if we can sort of nail down what does make him stand out from the rest. I've seen a lot of people suggesting that his ability to get out of tight spaces, his ability to know what to do with the ball before it even arrives at him. Are they sort of things that you've noticed as well? And, and if not, can you expand on what makes him so so good, so special? Um, I would I would definitely say passing is is what makes him stand out. Um it's yet to be revealed sort of how he would cope with the Premier League. Um but I think yes, under pressure he 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 seems to be good. In the Premier League he'd have less time. So there would be a bit of a challenge there for him. But I think the thing is with Thubi with Mendy, what I would point out is his football IQ is is high. Um, Sophie, that is all about developing intelligent people, not just very good footballers, footballers with a, with a high IQ. And what strikes me with him is he's very receptive. So I think in terms of Liverpool and what Liverpool are trying to do in slot, he'd be able to take on board a lot of the ideas hopefully very quickly from a Liverpool perspective, about what's wanted from him. So I think what I would say about him is it's about intelligence. I would say his passing is 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 the the main thing. Um, he's still learning sort of when to come forward, when to break the lines, when to play it sideways, what, you know, the sort of passes he needs to play at, at, at various times. So I think excitingly for Liverpool, there's more of a ceiling for him for him to get to. Um, but I would say that's that's his most important trait. His his physicality is good. You know, he's not as tall and rangy as a Fabinho sort of player. I think he's much better suited for the for the slot system than if he were to join a Klopp team. I think if he were to join a Klopp team, he he'd be a very exciting player. But I think he's much better suited to to a slot team. He's shorter than a Fabinho type player. Liverpool's last prominent number six in in that position, but he. He has got physicality. I mean, without wanting to stick to sort of stereotypes too much, players from the Basque country, they're quite tough. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a region where, you know, it rains a lot of the year. You know, they're, they're used to the physical element of the, of the game. You know, he's, you know, he's, he's not the tallest. He's not short, but he, he's strong and he's gritty. And I think he, he, you know, from a passing point of view, from a physical point of view, he's a good level and with potential to improve. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, clearly not to bring to the table then. In terms of the fit at Liverpool, you touched upon it a moment ago, obviously in formation and, and I guess as well with those around him, how do you see that sort of working out? Because obviously it's a reasonably well-stocked midfield department, maybe not with this particular type, this particular stylistic fit, hence trying to sign him. We know about Mataro Endo and what he brings to the table. Clearly not suited, I think it's fair to say, to what Arlen Schlott wants to have in the base of that midfield. So from as of a Mendy point of view, with the likes of McAllister, of Oslai Jones, Elliot, Gravenberg, the list goes on, to be honest. How do you see that working? And do you see it as being a positive fit, I guess, as well? I do I do see it working. Uh, I think if you look at the the 4-3-3 formation, yeah, you can you can definitely see Dubi Mendy playing in that number six with McAllister, Sobaslai a little bit in front. I think um even though he, you know, he absolutely can play that sitting role, which I think Liverpool fans, you know, really want. They want to see a player that can kind of do that aspect of the game and then let McAllister, Sobsley, or the other midfielders really go and, and strut their stuff going forward. Um, I do think there's room for quite a lot of flexibility in, in the slot system. I mean, I'm not a tactical expert on the minutiae of, of what, you know, everything slot is trying to do. But I feel, having looked at Feyenoord on the slots, they had Zeruki in that position who was a sitting midfielder, but he would sometimes come forward and make third man runs. Thubi Mendy is capable of doing that. He, he's a bit more dimensional than just being a sitting player. So I think if Slot wants him to just sit in there and put out fires, he'll do it. But I think what we could also see is a system where that's what Thubi Mendy does most of the time, but he also occasionally comes forward. And I think he's intelligent and has got the the skills to be able to move forward with the ball too. Um, I think, yes, under under a slot system, he's a 
very good fit. Um, as I said, more so than Klopp, uh, a Klopp system where were he to join a Klopp team in, in the past. So I, I think um, it's an exciting one for Liverpool. Um, I think, you know, there's, I don't think he, I think there's more to come from him. Um, but I think Liverpool would be getting a player at the right time with his passing, with his football intelligence, his ability to slot pretty comfortably in, into that midfield setup. I actually think he's he's quite, funnily enough, he's quite similar to Endo in some respects, but possibly a bit of an upgrade on Endo. Um, I really like Endo personally, but I think Liverpool would have a player who's a little bit younger, who's able to play more games. And I don't actually think if Endo stays, it would be the end of the road for Endo at Liverpool. I think he's a very good player to rotate within the team. But I think Thubi Mendy would probably be the, the prime candidate for, for that position and has some similar qualities to, to Endo and the other players. Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. The Endo stuff's really interesting. I think there definitely would be a role for him to play if he stuck around. How much football he'd get and whether he'd be happy with that is another question altogether. From what I've been told, he is willing to stay and fight for his place, which is great because you want that competition for places. But I've been saying all summer long, there's the Vitaro Endo who's at one stage of his career and brings the, to the table what he brings. And then there's Stefan Bacetic. Now, you probably need that middle ground, that 24, 25-year-old, to sort of take up most of the burden, whilst you can drop Batar Wender in a little bit and you can allow Bajessis to develop. Now, Zubin Mendy feels like that exact guy, to be honest with you, hence being so enamoured with the prospect of signing him. Obviously, we'll wait and see what happens. But, yeah, the Batar Wendo side, and maybe there will be sort of horses for courses in certain games whereby you do want that more tough tackling. Guys are going to win you the ball back, and Batar Wendo fits that criteria. 